Greetings from chess.com. I am here to cover the journey of India's 59th Grandmaster N.R. Visak. So let's get to know more about him through this video. So N.R. Visak was born on 24th April 1999. He became India's 59th Grandmaster. A very interesting story. Both Gukesh and N.R. Visak were playing their games in 2019 uh, in during the Delhi Open and N.R. Visak finished his game a bit early. And that is why he is the India's 59th Grandmaster and Gukesh went on to become India's 60th Grandmaster. So two GMs, uh, I mean India got two GMs on the same day and I was there during the event. So Anna Visak started chess quite early. He started at age 9 and uh, he learned chess through his father initially. And uh, the advantage that Anna Visak had was that he has a brother who also is a very strong chess player. He has already scored three GM norms and uh, may become GM very soon. So they used to practice uh, together. Uh, I have been watching their journey right from those days uh, where they used to play state championship in Tamil Nadu. And uh, Enar Visak progressed very well uh, with, uh, with his brother. And uh, his favorite chess player is Vladimir Kramnik. So when I told him that I'm making this video and I'm covering his profile, he was very kind to show, uh, to send his uh, best game to us. And if you put all the best moves played by Indian grandmasters together, I would, I would strongly say that uh, his move would be in the top, top ten or top five, definitely. Uh, more on that game very soon. So let's know when he got his first Grandmaster Norm. So he got his first Grandmaster Norm in Pardubis in Zek Republic and then the Turkish League where he scored seven and a half points and then ultimately he got his final Norm in the Delhi Open. And he also had a great performance in Elekhan Memorial where he tied for first, had to settle for second because of a, a poor tie break but uh, getting first in an Elekhan Memorial event was, was a great accomplishment for an Visa. And he also got a scholarship in his journey from Airports Authority of India, which helped him to, you know, participate in abroad events. And uh, now he's employed by Indian Railways and uh, is also practicing chess. So that was a, a brief um, info about Anna Visak. Now let's jump into one of his best games. And I would say it's a killer game. So this is a game he played against Vaishali, who is the sister of Pragnananda. So let's get started. This is uh, coming from a Queen's Gambit, d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5. We now have the Queen's Gambit and after knight c3, Vaishali played d takes c4. In this position, e4 is another way to play. Um, it's also viable theoretically, but uh, Visak chose a mild approach. He played e3 intending to capture the pawn on c4 with his bishop and after a6 he captured the pawn and after b5 he played bishop b3, bishop b7, castles and c5. This is a critical position. I would also give this position to let's say an international master or a grandmaster. Uh, I think it's a very instructive position. If they are not uh, aware of the theory then finding this move over the board is not easy. So take a moment to see what you would do as white. In this position, Anna Visak came up with a very strong move. He played pawn to e4. The idea is to open this uh, line, this diagonal for the bishop and also intend to go d5 or e5 depending on black's response. Now this is actually a pawn sacrifice as you can see that the knight and bishop are keeping an eye on the e4 square but it very much works in white's favor because white is ahead in development. And after e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes e4. It's again your chance. What do you want to do as white? This move is simple uh, because you know once you sacrifice the pawn, you have to make up for it by showing some activity. So in this position, Anna Visak was able to develop a new piece, bring the rook into the game with rook e1, attacking the bishop, and after bishop d5, he continues the initiative. New move, new piece. He brings his bishop into the game with bishop g5, and after bishop into b3. He played queen takes b3 and now after c4 he put his queen to c2. And in this position, black has a difficult choice to make. He has to move his queen or do something about this. If he goes bishop e7, you will see what happened in the game. But if black played queen d5, I still feel white has initiative after rook e5 followed by pawn to d5. So 
After queen c2, bishop e7, and now Rizak took his time and came up with a very nice move. Again, a good moment for you to think about what you would do in this position. I would say that you can consider taking about 5 minutes in this position. There are different options. You can play bishop into e7, you can play uh, pawn to h4, you can play pawn to d5 or something else. Now in this position, it's very important that you play pawn to d5 for initiative. You have to calculate a lot to make this pawn move work, but it works at the end of the day. If you play bishop to e7, exchanges always benefit the defender in cases like this. After queen e7, black is ready to escape with castle. So a move like h4 also is not so viable because black can simply develop knight c6 and then even take back the bishop if you capture with his knight. So in this position, the move chosen by Anarvisak is d5 and it's very nice. If black takes queen takes d5, you will see what happened in the game. But if you take bishop to g5 in this position, there is d takes e6, a very long variation by the way. If f takes e6, there is rook takes e6 followed by queen f5 check and then it's all uh, game over. Because if you play bishop f6, there is knight g5 check and then after king f8, there is rook takes f6. And if you take queen takes f6, there is at least queen c8 check winning the game for white. So coming back to this variation after bishop into g5 d takes a6, you might say, how about castling? In case of castling, white has this elaborate combination with rook a d1 attacking the queen first and once the queen moves, you take on g5 followed by e7. And let's say once the rook goes to e8, white can play rook d8 intending to capture rook into e8 and if you take rook into d8, there is e8 queen and then back rank mate follows. If you move the knight let's say to c6, then white can first play rook takes a8 followed by e8 queen again winning the game. So all this was very well thought by Anar Visak and that is the reason uh, his opponent saw all this and played queen takes d5. Now of all that you have seen so far it looks great but uh, something more beautiful is about to come. After queen takes d5 white played bishop takes e7 and after king takes e7 he played rook a d1 attacking the queen and now let's say if we move queen to h5 white can play queen d2 and these threats are lethal. So in this position, Vaishali played queen to c5 and again it's a good moment for you to figure out white's best move. If you ask yourself what is black intending to do, knight d7 or knight c6 will definitely come into mind. So if you can find out a move to prevent these moves, I think that's, that's going to work. A move like queen d2 is also strong but the move played by Anna Visak, knight e5 is very strong indeed. After knight e5, black has actually got no moves. If you play a move like f6 in this position, then white has queen e4 intending to capture the rook on a8 and let's say if the rook moves to a7, you can already play knight g6 followed by queen takes e6. So in this position, after knight e5, Vaishali played rook a7 and this is the moment, the moment that I was talking about. Very nice move. I think um, like if you make a list, uh, this move by an Indian GM would definitely be in the top 5 or 10. The move played by Anavisak in this position is Queen to F5. I think claps for this. I think this is a very nice move. When I looked at it, I was in awe of this. Like this is a brilliant move because number one, it threatens Queen takes F7. Number two, it threatens Knight G6 check. Number three, it's placing the Queen in front of a pawn. And after e takes f5, there is a mate again. So after queen f5, Vaishali resigned, but uh, you can now figure out how white finishes the game after e takes f5. It's knight g4 check, making sure that the king doesn't come to f6, and then after rook takes e5, there is a mate on d8. Beautiful, isn't it? And after queen f5, if you make a move like rook d8, there is queen f7 directly. And if you play, let's say, king e8, so that the rook protects the f7 pawn, then again white has an elegant way to finish up the game with rook d8 check, and after king takes d8, there is knight takes f7, picking the queen and winning the game. I hope you liked this game played by Anna Visak, and uh, let's uh, wish Anna Visak a happy birthday. Anna Visak, we wish you all the success in your endeavors. And uh, thank you for playing such a wonderful game. Um, may you enjoy the year ahead. And to all the viewers, thank you for watching the video. Do like the video if you 
uh, like the content and uh, do subscribe to our channel if you are here for the first time and i'll be back with another video soon until then take care bye bye